this is home. This is home to generous, friendly people who are enthusiastic and caring. They are the very kind of people who have been able to find success through an application of immense, unselfish, and sincere effort in their every endeavor. They are North Dakotans, and even though their home state is a big state in a physical sense, the very fabric of a true North Dakotan is born in the small communities where the majority of the citizens of the state seek a livelihood. Across the sprawling landscape, municipalities abound. Some of them nothing more than tiny hamlets, others are thriving agricultural towns where residents have learned to ride the ups and downs that come with life in a largely rural state. One such town is Washburn. Nestled along the scenic Missouri River, residents there have learned that the very lifeblood of a town like Washburn depends upon the contributions of the outstanding inhabitants of that town. In other words, the voluntary benefaction of those who will advance efforts far beyond the work of their everyday lives for the benefit of their fellow citizens. The story you'll hear today is about a big man, a generous man from a big state, and it is a classic example of how a lifetime of what some might see as small offerings in a small town, in the end, add up to something larger than life itself. The big man, the big heart, the big life we'll honor today is the precious memory of Bill Beeks, as we welcome him to the North Dakota Aviation Hall of Fame. up and down the streets of Washburn and you are looking up and down the streets of just about any small town in North Dakota. So what's the difference between Washburn and other communities? Well, odds are you'll find outstanding citizens in just about every town, but in Washburn, you had Bill Beeks. I guess he was a very sociable fellow. He liked to tease his nieces and nephews. He had a very good sense of humor. Well, he uh, was very active in the church that I go to. Uh, and uh, he was always helping, always involved. And he just did it naturally. He was always there when, when the community needed him. Everybody knew him. You know, he, his everlasting life is that everybody who knew Bill liked Bill and um, you know, he touched everyone that he came across in some special way. So, how did a guy that so many people remember so fondly gain the qualities that made him that way? There could be a variety of reasons, but it's a pretty safe bet that a solid upbringing and family life were at the core of Bill's big character. Bill's father was also a Hall of Fame aviator, and along with Bill's mother, was a major influence in the lives of all of their children. Cliff Beeks. Um, you know, signed up for World War II with a family uh, because aviation was something he believed in in America and fighting for his country was something he believed in. He shared that passion and love with his family and his grandkids and it's just kind of in your blood. There were four boys. I was the oldest, Bill was the next oldest. Our father was in the uh, Army Air Corps for a couple of years, got out in 1944, and when the war was over, uh, he went and got a commercial license and started flying. Growing up in a small town, you, you knew everybody, and uh, as in, in school, you did everything. You played in the band, you sang in the choir, you played ball, all the different sports, whatever was available. It was expected, or it was available, and you did it. It's clear after visiting with members of the Beeks family that the well-rounded approach Bill's parents took with their kids turned out to be a very good thing. As we've heard, community participation was surely encouraged, and you can imagine the large value of the benefits gained by those experiences. But as Bill and Marianne's daughter Lara tells us, the Beeks brothers also had the benefit of learning from a dad 
that was not afraid to roll up his sleeves. One of the things I do remember, you know, about him was just his absolute industriousness. When you think of all of like the different things that, you know, he did in terms of like building a career and supporting his family from, um, you know, crop spraying, you know, fixing airplanes, being a flight instructor. I mean, at one point we had bought some land for gravel pits and he sold the gravel, I think, to the Army Corps of Engineers when they were building um, the dam on Lake Sakakawea. I mean, it's just, you know, all of these like little things that he found, um, you know, to make his way. So it's apparent that a strong drive to succeed and to be creative in finding ways to diversify along the way was another expectation instilled in Bill and his brothers. All four boys were eventually college bound. The three eldest went to the University of North Dakota, while brother Donald attended North Dakota State. As a result, Bill moved away and became a teacher for a short time. But in due course, his career path would lead him back to the family business and the place where he eventually met his wife, Mary Ann. It was also the place where he and his brothers learned their values. And among the many values the Beaks boys were blessed with, perhaps the one that stands out the most was the love of flying. It was a spark kindled by their father, and one that would grow throughout their lives, and especially in Bill's case, through the countless lives he touched through aviation. Well, Cliff had a love for flying, and it was easy for that to rub off on the boys. They were with their dad a lot, spent a lot of time around the airplane, and uh, just naturally fell into it. This is something that my dad used to say to me a lot, um, was that when he got up in the morning, he didn't go to work, he got up and got to go play with his toys. And I really think that his passion for flying was probably even a bigger part of that than even you know his experience as an educator. It was just that he, he was one of the lucky ones to have found and was able to make a career out of doing something he absolutely loved. It's become evident that Bill's former students are also grateful for his love of flying. They'll tell you it was abundant and an easy bug to catch when they spent time at the airport with Bill. Well, I'll tell you, he spent a lot of time out here. It was about seven days a week, and you could tell just from that the passion that he had for aviation, and that definitely rubbed off on me. There's no doubt about that. I, after I started taking my first lesson, I pretty much became the airport bum and, and hung around Bill as much as I could. Along with an incredible passion for flying, Bill's students also came away from their experiences with the benefit of his well-honed sense of humor. And as you might expect, there were more than a few memorable moments along that way. To me, he was very generous and he was humorous and he had a lot of patience. People that are familiar with a Piper Cub, you solo it from the back seat. So when you took instruction, Bill was in the front and I was in the back. And Bill was about six foot five and about 265 pounds. And one of my biggest memories was coming in on final approach. You're supposed to be aligned with the runway. And many times Bill would turn around and, and kind of beller, because it's loud in there, he'd beller, you're not lined up with the runway. And I always wanted to say what runway, because I couldn't see it. Bill was a big guy, you know, so I, I'd be leaning and trying to look around Bill and stay lined up. But like I say, underneath that, he was very, uh, very patient with me, you know, because uh, trust me, he needed patience to, to instruct me, so. So, has anyone mentioned the fact that just about everything about Bill Beeks was big? You know, he was a presence entering any room, you know, given his size, and he always had a big smile for everyone. He's a big old teddy bear. And he liked people. And, you know, there's a little bit of self-deprecating humor that, you know, makes you that much more approachable. Bill was a big guy physically. He had a deep voice and kind of a gruff voice. So I think initially Bill could be a little intimidating to students until you got to know him, but he was a very big hearted and a very patient guy underneath that. He had a big voice, and that I remember from 
um, my math class in there. He was very uh, deep voice and he got your attention. He was a larger than life sort of guy. Yes, it has been said that Bill had a big voice, and that was part of his certain knack for gaining people's attention. But it wasn't always because of his big stature and character that people knew Bill. Community service was another core value he learned very early on. He was in civic club, he was on the fire department, he was very active in church. He was just a general guy who liked to associate with people. When I was in junior high, the city decided to build a swimming pool. Not with tax money, just with donated money and, and supplies and labor. And it was just a whole bunch of people there would show up. So it was all a community effort. And that was, you know, everything was that way. He was a community-minded person. He was always there to serve the people of our community. That's the type of guy he was, that's it. A look at the list of community services and organizations Bill was a part of is impressive, to say the least. He was a member of many local civic organizations. He was a veteran fireman. And his daughter, Laura, tells us he was a true champion among volunteers. You know, he was had a huge role in our church. Um, he sang in the choir. He, he loved to sing. He, you know, was a part of the regular Bible study. Um, you know, every day having coffee with, with the guys at the local cafe. You know, he, he, was a vol he volunteered for anything and everything that he had time to do. He was an everyman. So it wasn't just that he was approachable, he was everywhere to be approached. One memorable example of Bill's approachability stems from the fact that for countless kids who grew up in Washburn, he was Santa Claus. Even for one of the kids who might have been just a little bit more observant than the others. And, and that was always fun too. I remember my little, one of my little friends you know, going to sit on his lap and whispering to him, I know you're not Santa, you're Bill Beeks. <laughs> to be sure, Bill loved young people. He knew how to get through to them and he made lasting impressions on so many. But to hear his brother Paul tell it, silly Billy as he was affectionately known to many, wasn't all about serious business. He loved to have fun and maybe that's because at heart, Bill never forgot how to be a kid himself. The one thing that sticks in my mind is we were in uh, Texas for a wedding and we were at a place with a swimming pool staying in there. Bill's doing cannonballs with, with the little kids and <laughs> having more fun than the kids were right making. He was big enough, he about emptied the pool. Throughout the busiest years of Bill's career, the importance of family being there with him while he worked remained front and center. This family tradition sprang from the days when Bill and his brothers grew up at the airport with their dad. As he worked, Bill's days were sometimes long and whether for community or commerce, he was always on call. Through it all, he was able to impart life lessons on daughter Laura through the ample time they were able to spend together at the airport. It was a great deal for both of them. Laura learned a lot, and besides the obvious benefits, Big Bill also had a set of small hands around just when he needed them. You know, as a little kid, really grew up at the airport, you know, particularly summers, I would spend a lot of time out there with him. I think, I think he had me working at the airport by the time I was, you know, 10 or 11 years old um, during the summers. He'd be working on airplanes and working on the engines, and he was such a big guy with big hands. Sometimes he would have trouble reaching into some of those smaller spaces, and so he'd yell for me to come into the shop, you know, and have me stick my tiny little hands in the engine and hold things for him because while well, my dad was a larger-than-life guy, I, from a size perspective, am much closer to my mom's height, so definitely. And even though Laura didn't end up as a pilot, her dad and the airport offered her opportunities in the air that most kids might only dream of. And only Bill Beeks could deliver. I, I must have been, again, maybe 11 or 12 years old, and we were up flying one afternoon, and he looked over at me and put his hands 
behind his head just like this and looked over at me and said, Lara, land the plane. <laughs> and I started to cry. I was like, no, daddy, I can't do it. I can't. And he talked me off the ledge and coached, coached me through the whole process. And I remember that was the first time, you know, I was able to land the airplane with, I mean, I would say probably minimal help. I don't think that he really let me go to totally on my own, but, um, but that's one memory that's always stuck with me. So by now it's clear to see the kind of man Bill Beeks was. Not only a big guy with a big heart and a big approach to just about everything he did, his family says he could be a bit of a softie too. In fact, Bill loved kitty cats, and it's been said he could communicate with his tomcat snuggles in a language only he and the cat could understand. I can tell you the love of cats lives on in the Beeks family. Both Laura and Eileen got a bit of coaching from their feline friends during our interview sessions. <laughs> But speaking of big aspirations, not only did Bill thrive in his business at Central Flying Service, he became the face of aviation in North Dakota as he appeared frequently on many media outlets. He was the airport manager at Washburn, and he was a member of the Black Sheep Squadron of the Civil Air Patrol. And like his dad, Bill served as a lobbyist for aviation interests in Bismarck, and the list goes on. So, what then made him such an effective public figure? He did most of his work when they still had the North Dakota Ag Aviation Department, and he served as president of that. And he um, lobbied the legislature, and he wasn't shy of a camera. He was a natural. He did, well, did a great job speaking in front of people. Um, and again, you know, like I mentioned earlier, I think his passion this is his passion and given this is something he was so passionate about and cared so much about i think it it just made him so effective um, when it came to you know lobbying and advocating for you know the runway or the industry throughout those busy years of being involved in so many aspects of the aviation industry perhaps one of the biggest efforts bill spearheaded was the construction of a concrete runway big enough to land jets on and the overall improvement of the Washburn Airport. This was no small effort. It required patience and a diplomatic approach, a style that appeared to be a natural for Bill Beeks. In the end, this turned out to be a crowning achievement. All you need to do is to visit this facility just north of Washburn, and you'll see exactly what I mean. Bill had a big part of that. I think he had his work cut out for him, but you always have to look forward and get it to grow, and I think Bill started that. And he was a good salesman, so, um, you know, so it, it was a tough go, and it was between, you know, the city officials, you know, and getting that financial support to help contribute towards paving the runway. It, and it was a long process, and, it, you know, the fact that he was successful is just amazing, absolutely amazing. So as we look back on where this story has taken us, it's easy to see that a collection of all of the things Bill Beeks imparted upon his family, his community, and his state during his lifetime did indeed add up to this. The life of Bill Beeks was the very essence of a big life. Sadly, that life came to an end on a late summer day in 2006. The news was devastating for family and community alike. But the spirit of passion for flight and lessons Bill passed on to his family during his lifetime proved to be both powerful and meaningful. You know, I mean, he flying was his absolute passion. So if something terrible was supposed to happen, I mean, this he went out doing something he absolutely loved. And I mean, there, I guess there's something to be said for that, although, um, you know, I would rather it not have happened. I would rather, you know, that I still have him today, but. The love of Bill's community was a big presence during this difficult time as well. As you might imagine, the crowd at his funeral was sizable, far too big to get everyone in the church sanctuary at one time. And that alone says a lot, but consider this. Bill was a veteran Washburn fireman. And as his niece Eileen recounts, the salute his fellow firemen gave that day 
will never leave her memory. The fire department had his boots and his hat and his coat on the side of the road. So they had stopped traffic on 83. And, you know, the entire funeral procession crossed, you know, the main thoroughfare for that side of the state to get from Bismarck to Minot. And those boots, I, I, in my life, I will never forget seeing those boots. And it was just like, he was so much a part of everything that that simple gesture from the fire department was huge. It's safe to say then that the impact Bill Beeks made during his lifetime has not been lost on his family, his friends, or his community. Today, we're taking one more step to make sure the impact that Bill made on aviation in North Dakota will live on. Bill Beeks will now join his father as he becomes the newest member of the North Dakota Aviation Hall of Fame. And his friends and family now recount the many quality attributes that brought him to this elite group. He did a lot of volunteer work. He did a lot to work for the community. And he deserves it. I guess it means a lot to me. Well, I want to congratulate the whole family. You know, I, you know, Bill is very deserving. And I, I've got a soft spot for the guy because he was good to me. I congratulate uh, the Beeks family on this. He's a, uh, a gentleman that earned the right to be a Hall of Famer. Well, I think he should be in the Hall of Fame because he dedicated his life to aviation. Uh, not only because he did it for a living, but he did it for love. I think just the type of person he was, um, the leadership ability that he had, um, he promoted aviation. There was always that he was talking about something aviation when it came to the fire part of it. I think the Hall of Fame would be missing out if Bill weren't in it. I feel an immense, you know, sense of, of pride. I, you know, I'm, of course I'm biased because he is my dad and I love him dearly and we were very, very close. Um, but I mean, I really, you know, I think he really, truly deserves this. You know, I think it's, there's a legacy to it as well, which, you know, makes me very proud to see, you know, that my grandfather you know, is in the Hall of Fame. And now, you know, my father is going to be a part of that as well. It just, um, I'm very, very proud. So now it is time to say thank you, Bill Beeks. Your immense body of service to your community, your state, and to the aviation industry is acknowledged and appreciated. The legacy of your big life will live on. Welcome to the North Dakota Aviation Hall of Fame.